What happens when you spend any length of time with anyone? Boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, partner, pastor, coach, shoot, even yourself. It's conflict. And when you have unresolved conflict or lack of communication, resentment builds up and your plans to build wealth is crippled. So in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, on the Wealth and Wisdom series, we're going to unpack Proverbs chapter 15 on some secrets that King Solomon on how to improve communication and resolve conflicts in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And yes, we've had a rough last two weeks of going to Boston, of training in Orlando, but right now we are back in Dallas. So we've been unpacking a proverb every week for the last 14 weeks. And now on the 15th week, we're gonna unpack Proverbs chapter 15. And a bunch of nuggets here are starting to be discussed by King Solomon on mastering communication and resolving conflict. So if you haven't done so already and you feel these videos have providing some value to you, please consider hitting like on this video. If you watch a couple of our videos and you've seen what we've done, our body of work, and you think that our channel brings you value, please consider hitting subscribe. Okay, so let's get into it. Here's seven things I picked away from the John Maxwell Leadership Bible on how John Maxwell actually interprets the first seven verses of Proverbs chapter 15. And I've got a couple other areas here about wealth building and discipline. So let's get into these seven verses. A foundational verse that I picked out of this whole entire Proverbs 15 is actually from verse 16. And it reads like this. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Why? Because King Solomon is saying, listen, the first step to building wealth, a relationship with God, a relationship with people around you, the people that you love and care about, is the fear of the Lord. So he's going to chapter 15, verse 1. He talks about being calm, about how to attack conflict, how to communicate when time's intention is at the highest. Let's read it. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Now, this kind of opposite from probably how you were raised. It's very opposite from what we see on social media. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that everybody saw, the whole world saw how Will Smith and Chris Rock handled conflict in the middle of the Oscars. Is that the right way to handle things? So if you find yourself in an area of conflict and you don't address it in a calm tone and just tension keeps rising, set yourself up for failure in that regard. So this is opposite. Again, this is opposite. That's what, what is it talking about King Solomon? A soft answer? Could you imagine a king with a soft answer or a very bodacious, deep voice, God voice, or a soft voice, a calm tone, a low tone? Consider doing that the next time you're in an argument with somebody. Attack them with a soft, calm tone. Let me know what happens. So if you're firm, you want to use this, and next time you have conflict, please put it in the comment section below this affirmation. I am calm when confronting conflict. I am calm when confronting conflict. Second one is what happens when you are dealing with feedback and somebody's giving you quote unquote constructive criticism. Let's take a look at what it says here in verse two. It reads like this. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pour forth foolishness. So if you're gonna give somebody feedback or you're gonna take feedback, for example, I was just at a speaking engagement in, uh, uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. Some people liked me, some people didn't like me. I totally get it, I totally understand. Nonetheless, I was listening to people's feedback of me from both good, bad, and the ugly, why? Because I want to improve. Some people attacked me, some people gave me grace, but those that gave me feedback from a truthful, honest perspective versus their own opinion from a reflective or knee-jerk reaction of how much they didn't like me, I wasn't taken. But the people that told me why from facts and truth and knowledge, I receive because I want to get better. So consider that if you're on the other side. If you want to give somebody constructive feedback, if you want to give somebody some improvement in how they're doing it, consider how you're discussing your feedback from what perspective. Another area is who's watching, who's judging an argument, who's judging a discussion and conflict. Well, verse three, it reads like this. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. So don't think that God has removed himself from your argument. God has removed himself from your conflict. God has removed himself from things that are going bad between you and somebody else, two different parties, that God has removed himself 
from you. In fact, this is the time, if you do fear the Lord, back to our foundational verse, if you have a little bit of the fear of the Lord, ask yourself, hmm, how is God perceiving how I'm acting in this moment right now? There was conflict that happened to us last week. I took a breath, calm tone. I used to have a knee-jerk reaction, especially coming out the Marine Corps, because the Marine Corps did nothing but hone this anger and this pain and this frustration inside of me for a very long period of my life. It's been taking time over my lifetime. Listen, I've always said I've taken my entire 30s to repair the mistakes of my 20s, and I'm still working on it in my 40s. It's not like I'm restored or completely 100% finished. I'm still working on it. I still have a lot of mistakes. I still have knee-jerk reactions when people come at me. It's okay, but now I've come to learn, hey, God is watching me right now, and if I want God to bless my work, God to bless this conversation, God to bless the people that you're reaching, maybe I need to make sure I respect the fact that God is watching, hearing, listening, how I'm responding in this moment. This leads us to verse four. How does God want us to really use our words? Let's take a look here in verse four. It reads like this. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. So use words to fix the problem. Use words to not blame. We have an acronym that we use here in our family, in our company, and it goes like this, D-U-G. D stands for diffuse, U stands for unify, and G stands for glue. When I'm going through conflict resolution, I'm thinking to myself, okay, how do I diffuse the situation, number one? Number two, how do I bring people together? And number three, what type of resolution, what type of conversation can we have to make sure when this comes up again, we remember this conversation, we remember the lessons learned, so therefore we improve from it, so therefore we don't deal with this speed bump ever again, or at least minimize its impact. Verse five talks about a very important relationship between parents and their children, or you and somebody that you respect. Let's look into verse five, it reads like this. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. The bottom line here is to stay teachable, to be open to correction. Don't think you've arrived. Don't think that you're end all, be all. One of the most frustrating things in my experience is dealing with board meetings and dealing with other people of my peers, and everybody's bum, 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 right away, sharing their two cents without listening to other people. One of those frustrating things that I handle is that. When people are already speaking their opinion, already talk, talking off the top of their head, instead of asking and finding out the truth, getting to the bottom of a matter, getting to the bottom of a conflict, getting bottom to a area of uh, lacking communication, right off there, coming off the top of their head with an answer instead of seeking and therefore using words to stay teachable and be open to correction. See, the other thing too is here. When you are wrong, be very quick to apologize. I've been in very many situations, yes, where I was wrong. And my ego said, oh, I don't care what people say, I'm just gonna do me. And then I'm thinking about what God is saying, what King Solomon is saying, what these words are saying. It's like, you know what? I need to swallow my own pride. I need to empty my cup and say to the other person, listen, bro, man, I was wrong. I apologize, I'm human, I'm trying to improve too as well. I hope you forgive me. Can we get better from this situation? I'm with you, I hope that you continue to trust me, you find a way to trust me. Please forgive me, I want to move forward. So please, don't be the type of person that thinks they cannot improve or worse, that you can't apologize. So if that's you and you want to improve in this area, please put it in the comment section below this affirmation. I am teachable and open to correction. I am teachable and open to correction. Put it in the comment section below. Now the next one is if you're in any leadership position, if you're in any relationship with somebody else, the verse here talks about what your relationship should be, how you should go about your dealings with that person. Let's read it in verse six, it goes like this. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure, but in the revenue of the wicked is trouble. Here's the thing, add value to everyone who's in contact with you even if you disagree. And by the way, for those of you looking over your shoulder, making money looking over your shoulder, I've always said that people that make money looking over their shoulder and successful at it, whew, you're more talented, more ambitious than a person who's not looking over the shoulder. But if you just redirect the efforts and the focus and the ambition that you have and saying, listen, let me do something that's not illegal or lacking integrity, but redirect that same energy into something that has integrity, that has some righteousness, that has legality to it, imagine how much more successful you'd be. I've always joked around that imagine if Pablo Escobar was legit, if he only redirected his intentions and his talent to serving people in a righteous way versus a wicked way, imagine what that guy would do in the business world. Which leads me to verse seven. 
How should you go about using your words in areas of conflict? How should you go about using your words when you want to communicate? Because everybody today on social media, everybody today talking about, hey man, just speak your mind, do your thing, be you, do you. Okay, but how do you do you according to King Solomon? How do you do you according to God's word? Verse seven, it reads like this. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the fool does not do so. Now, I grew up in a neighborhood where everybody's picking at each other. I was in the Marine Corps, everybody's joking with each other. Probably not talking about some very colorful things that should be spoken to one man to another. That's just the way the Marine Corps was. But the more I grew out of that, the more I realized now in a leadership position, leading people, not just in the military, just not people who have an athletic background, not just leading people who are Republican or Democrat or have a God that don't have a God, once I started leading people of all sorts of demographics and backgrounds and socioeconomic upbringings, I realized that I had to use my words much differently. So therefore, I improve my involvement in their life, but also minimize any potential conflicts that otherwise would have been had had I not chosen this path. I just hope that you're taking this guidance of me going through Proverbs chapter 15, so therefore you can experience your own journey because there's over, what, 30 three verses here in chapter 15 of King Solomon's thoughts and sayings, Proverbs of how to go about life, which leads me into wealth building. Some of you are interested, okay, if King Solomon was the wisest and richest king who ever lived, what does he say about wealth building in chapter 15? And by the way, the whole entire Proverbs, Proverbs, and even the book after this, Ecclesiastes, is filled with wealth building scriptures and Proverbs of how to go about with your money, your possessions, your opportunities, and the relationships that you have in your life. So, I'm going to go over here uh, some topics on wealth building and discipline. Let's look at verse 8. What is it? Great wealth versus fear of God. What's more important? Which one wins? Let's read about it here in verse 16. It reads like this. Better is a little fear with the Lord than great treasure with trouble. What does uh, Jesus say in the New Testament? What is it for a whole man to gain the world but yet lose his soul? At the end of the day, what does your money do for you? Is it for you to glorify you? Or is it to glorify God and glorify other people within inside the kingdom and make sure that people who don't know God, who don't know Jesus, who don't know faith, you get to expose them and make them aware that there's an opportunity for them to get to know a higher and greater power, a higher, greater relationship through their success, through the prosperity, through the knowledge, because what is it all for? Let's go to another bullet point here. Having counselors around you. This is what this proverb is known for, especially in many churches, in many groups of masterminding and getting people to the next level. A lot of people know Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22 through the scripture, and it reads like this. Without counsel, plans go awry, but in a multitude of counselors, they are established. So when you're going about having conflict with somebody, who do you talk to? Who's your first phone call? And is that first phone call, are they bashing the other person just like you are bashing the other person? Or the first phone call, the second phone call that you're making, are they defending the relationship? Are they defending your purpose? Are they defending your mission? Are they defending what you're all about? Or are they just there to take your side? I, I told my wife, babe, if you're going to find me in conflict, the first thing you're going to find me is I'm going to be talking to godly men. I'm looking for godly counselors. You're not going to find me with a drink in my hand. You're not going to find me with a drug in my nose. You're not going to find me with hanging out at the bar, talking to members of the opposite sex. I want to surround myself with counselors because I want to master the thing called communication. I don't want to add any unnecessary conflicts, unnecessary communication, unnecessary elements to making this conflict even worse. If you found yourself exposed that you don't have a lot of counselors around you and you need to, please put this affirmation in the comment section below. I am surrounding myself with wise counselors. I'm surrounding myself with wise counselors. Put it in the comment section below. What about just being aware? It's Financial Literacy Month. April is Financial Literacy Month. What does King Solomon say about awareness, about literacy? Let's read what he says here in verse 28. It reads like this. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. Think about this. You're in 2022 now. You're watching this video, whatever year you're watching this in the future. You want an answer for debt. You want an answer for, for being paycheck to paycheck. You want an answer for not being happy financially. You want an answer for creating generational wealth. Well, it says here, the heart of the righteous studies 
how to answer that problem, how to answer disagreement, how to answer any business partner or relationship that you might have. You're looking for ways to improve. So therefore, you have a better answer the next time this situation comes your way. Last but not least, King Solomon always talks about discipline. Let's read what he says here in verse 19. It reads like this. The way of the lazy man is like a hedge of thorns, but the way of the upright is a highway. So which route do you want to take? Laziness through thorns or actually get up and get to work? Boom. You're on the express pass. Now how he passed it through all the tolls. You're able to pay the price versus not paying the price, being lazy and going through a hedgeway or pathway of thorns. What about seeking knowledge? Verse 14, it reads like this. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. Listen, the challenge sometimes is these type of videos on the internet where people are more excited about being entertained versus being educated. So ask yourself, am I online with one of the greatest times in human history to have access to information that can improve your life? What do you find yourself doing more of in terms of addressing this area of improving communication, building wealth, being disciplined in your ways? Do you find yourself being more entertained and checking out or finding ways to improve and get better for the next day because the one that choose to improve and get better for the next day will eventually start running circles and laps and miles and decades over one that just chooses to be entertained. So that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your feedbacks, your questions. Do you agree with me? You don't agree with me, please put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out these two videos right here on how King Solomon writes down biblical wisdom and knowledge how to attack prosperity, wealth, and wisdom God's way. That being said, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.